It is July 23rd. It is a Thursday. And you know what? I um I kept my promise. I came back to this episode. This episode actually was supposed to be um a cryptid episode. I don't know if you know what a cryptid is. A cryptid is an animal that has not been proven to exist. So it was supposed to be one of those fun kind of conspiracy episodes, but then I you know what? Do, honestly, doing the research on Bigfoot, um, the Southwestern Thunderbird, the Loch Ness Monster, Nessie, Tessie, which is Tahoe's version of the Loch Ness Monster, I kind of realized that most of them are bullshit. So I kind of was just like, okay, I don't even want to do this. If I'm not going to fully believe what I'm getting into, I'm not going to do it. So I didn't. Um, you're probably hearing clicking. It's because I left sound effects on on this GarageBand podcast, and I forgot to turn them off. So I am doing that now. But um, this is episode 12. I got guests coming up. I think a couple of a uh, couple of weeks from now, but um, not any time. Maybe like episode 14, 15 ish. I'm kind of if I do the timeline correct. Um, it's been a week since I did that whole bullshit with the. Uh, I'm not going to call it bullshit, since I just blew off two of my guests. Um, didn't do it on purpose. Didn't do it for fun. But um, I imagine in their heads it seems like that. So <laughs> we'll give it what it is. I mean, I, I feel better. I feel way better than I did that whole week. I mean, that whole week I was just like, tear it down, burn it down. And then like with the whole world going to flames. I mean... I'm not going to say flames. I don't think we're there yet, but uh, there's just a lot going on. There's The pot is stirring, and I know mentally a lot of us feel like this. But regardless, I am not going to let us be brought down by the negative energy that is this entire world, or at least me personally. I mean, you can listen to me. You don't really have to take your my advice. Actually, I'll put this in as clear of words as possible. I don't think you should take my advice. I'm probably the worst person to give advice, but you can listen to my journey as I try to feel better. And I think this whole episode today is just a little bit of a, what is it? We'll call it spring cleaning. We'll call it spring summer cleaning. That is the good, it is a good name. That's a good title actually for this podcast episode. So we'll call it episode 12, spring summer cleaning. So it's just a bunch of me, talking about me just getting my routine back so like a big thing i haven't been doing is any of a like any semblance of a routine so once coronavirus hit um i kind of just threw everything out the window i was running i was planning to do a marathon and then i gained god let's see like 35 pounds something like that i gained an insane amount of weight during this whole quarantine and then um started a podcast i guess there's a positive out of it But, dude, like, holy shit. So, like, I think this week, I think that just um, blowing off the, I don't want to say blowing off, but uh, I'll say um, blemishing last week's podcast bookings kind of just put me in a spiral, which also brought me back up. Because now I'm thinking, okay, how am I going to push this further? How am I going to push myself further? I think that's the thing that everybody wants to do i think that's the key to life right is just to continue learning until you die and then there's a few things i'm learning that i like about this podcast is one i'm very sound effects heavy i love i love jingles i love little um i think is that what they're called foley art i don't know why i yelled that i'm sorry it was full like fully sound effects is that what it's called should i look that up right now no i shouldn't Actually, right now, okay, so I, I downloaded a game on my iPhone, so I've been getting into iPhone gaming because I have a big-ass phone. I um, I purchased the iPhone 11 or 12 Max, whichever the biggest one is, and I don't get it because it's, um, cause it's like the top-of-the-line one. I just, my favorite iPhones are the ones that are big because I have rather large hands, and I, just, <laughs> I wanted one that just kind of fit everything, so... Or fit inside my hand. So I got that one. But I just downloaded this game. Let me see. RBI Baseball. So I love playing like app. Or I just love games where you feel like simulators. That's the word. I love simulators. I like when you feel like you're doing whatever it is that you're doing. And I like when it's as official as possible. Um, I like flight simulators. I love racing simulators. That's a new thing I got into last year. 
which got me subsequently in F1, which um, we'll talk about later. It was the funny thing about that. But I got this RBI baseball game. Really good game, but it overheated my iPhone. This is the first time I've ever had this issue. I've never seen the temperature button, but uh, it did feel hot, you know. I should put some ice on it. I'm, does that work? Is that a, a possible fixture for that? I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't have a producer or anything. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I guess I should look into that. But um, overall, this week, let's see. What do I have planned? So this kind of podcast, I call it the spring cleaning because I kind of just want to talk about some things that I am addressing in my own life. Um, like I said, I, I really got into a slump with this whole coronavirus thing. Well, I think no one really cares anymore, but I think three months ago, we all thought we were dying. And, I mean, it was just safe to assume we didn't really know what was going to happen. But now we kind of know that, yeah, you're probably going to die, but uh, who cares? And so we have most of our locals um, just out and about, no, no mask needed, you know? One of those things where I can just talk to somebody. I'm like, you know, because I work in customer service and I'm always just like, hey, you know, before it started super nice, I tried to work around it. I'm like, can you please just put a mask on, please, just for this goddamn building? Just just one little form of respect. I mean, if you're walking into a business, I mean, and it's the business's rules, don't you think you should respect it? But uh, that is just not an ideal in American culture. So I understand it. I understand where it comes from. But at the same time, please put a fucking mask on. I'm working, but um, most of these people are just playing this shit, you know, they're like, I'm like, hey, do you mind putting a mask on? And then they're like, you know what, bitch? You messed with the wrong one. Don't you know I can do whatever I want here? It's my right. My God-given right. And I imagine, like, in their head, they're imagining, at least they themselves are imagining me just getting my ass beat by them somehow, you know? Just me in a headlock. Just a customer service worker just on the floor crying. Please, no, God. Stop. You can do whatever you want, sir. You can wear your mask. Or you can't, you know? The world is yours. <laughs> but, I mean, I'll, I'll get off the whole rant topic. But, um... Other than that, my life is great. <laughs> Other than that, uh, I mean, I feel like if you're a customer service worker, I already assume you deal with that. Maybe, what, every 30 minutes? It's, I mean, that's just the, the normal time frame for that. But I, I feel like you get accustomed to it. I mean, it's just like uh, with all customer service things, you kind of learn like, okay, let me just, let's work around this. And then especially food service, hospitality, all that. I know you know what to do. But, um... This episode, I wanted to talk about my spring cleaning things. I said that for the third time already, but uh, I'll talk about budgeting a little bit later. Um, a new thing I started to do is meditate. So everybody's been telling me, not everybody, three people have been telling me to meditate because it helps just keep you... And it's, it's not so much like um, it's going to change your life, but I think it just gives you... Um, it gives you the amount of control you need in times of uh, stress. You can always bring yourself down. And I didn't understand that until I started doing it. I think this is a week two. I've been doing it daily. So I've been trying to make sure to set time at least 10 minutes minimum. Um, I have an app. It's called Insight Timer. So that's what I use if you, wonder, if you are wondering what I use. And basically, it's just a bunch of free. I started with the guided ones, and now I'm kind of a... Uh, Branching off to myself, I kind of know the gist of what I need, and it's basically just to observe my breathing, calm down, and just relax, because there's sometimes I get so tense, you know, and it's like, there's just some situations you just need that kind of aspect, so I've been really pushing that in my life, I wake up every morning, that's one of the first things I do, and then another thing I've been doing that um, I stopped with this whole quarantine stuff is um stretching. So I have a I have a looming fear of not being able to have full movement when I'm older. So what I've been doing is just a bunch of stretches, just a lot of um you know bending over, touching my toes, stretching my legs out, reaching as far as I can. I don't know what those are called. I know they have names, but uh I'm not using them at the moment. And um 
I've been doing a lot of that, and then like a lot of uh, I do arm circles, you know, pull my my uh, you know, I wish I had like any of the scientific terms at the moment, but um, I've been doing a lot of that, and then um, lately I think this whole week. So what's what's funny is um, when I get anxiety with like stuff like uh, just the whole losing two of my bookings. Um, when I get anxiety with that. I usually panic really quick and then I'm like, okay, I need to do something else because uh, I failed at this. I'm not a perfect man. I am not what God sees me as, even though I'm not a religious man. You know, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, it's, it's a joke. But uh, the biggest issue I have is like, I, I try to jump into something else. I always try to jump into like, what's a version of normal for people. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go just get a blue collar job, even though I know I'm not going to like it. But in my head, I'm like, I'm going to do that. (laughs) <laughs> it's the safe way. It's the stable way. But once you, I feel like I always have to ring myself around because I, I like enrolled in, it, it was a free class. Thank God I didn't pay for it. But I like after this whole booking thing, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to get back into programming. I tried programming like two years ago and um wasn't very, it wasn't that I wasn't successful. It's just not what I wanted to do. And although it's a great knowledge that I highly recommend everyone learns, it's just not for me, you know? But uh, something with this whole booking thing, and I was just like, oh, my God, I don't know what I'm doing. So I I enrolled in, like, a programming course, but then I just disenrolled. I'm like, or is, that's not the word, unenrolled. Because I was like, what am I doing, dude? Just do you. So, I mean, it, I get like this usually before um, my school semester starts. I th- I'm one of those people that kind of needs school. I need something to constantly work towards. So, oh, that's exactly what I wanted to talk about. That's a good segue. So, in terms of school, education, I did not, um, I chose not to. I had a gap year, if, if we want to call it that, after high school, which is basically me just smoking marijuana and um, sitting at home. That's my gap year, as is for most Americans. But uh, I think, I think, uh, I really learned a lot about myself that year, and then I I worked on a bunch of movies and stuff, and then kind of showed me that I wanted to do something creative, not so much in the film industry, because um, I just didn't like that industry. I feel like those people are really run down, and it's like, for what, you know? I mean, you worked on a movie, that's cool. I I, You know, I can't really shit on those people, because that's their life, that's what they want to do, and... I think I like I like all kinds of creative stuff. I think I like everything creative. I like like art. I like uh, photography. I mean, just everything. I I try to be all encompassing, but um, focusing on one thing. Oh my god, I could never imagine being like a a production assistant for more than six years. And you know, like hats off to those people because that's insane. But like just me, I'm like okay. I I did maybe like. I don't know, maybe like five or I'd have to look back. I did a, I did a few projects and I just learned very quickly. I'm like, oh, I don't like this. You, you either got to move up or just get out of the industry. And I I think I uh, I just got out of the industry. I mean, that's just what I did. I just left. And I, you know what? I wonder what those people are doing. I mean, I used to have a Facebook, but I deleted my Facebook. Not in my social media purge of last week, My um, as uh, my good friend says my Britney moment, but, um, <laughs> but I did delete Facebook a long time ago. Well, just cause like, I don't know. It, I have, I will say like a week after I've deleted my social media, my life has been phenomenally better. There's no form of comparison going on anymore, which is incredible because I don't need that. Cause once I start comparing, I get anxious. And once I get anxious, I get panicky. And then that's where just stupid decisions come. So I feel like I'm telling you everything, you know, the six people that (laughs) listen to this show, I assume regularly, I have, uh, I have okay views, but, uh, there's, there's a small amount that listen to the whole thing, which I highly appreciate. That's cool. I really appreciate you guys. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, this, this whole school thing, I, well, what I was trying to say with that, I kind of just veered off and just kind of got sad, but, uh, I wrote my down, this is something I've never done before, and I think it's aptly, or it's very applicable to my podcast named I Want to Feel Better. So I wrote down my five-year goal. So 
I think so, there's something cool or there's something cool I like about physically writing down like my five years goals. I said five years goals, but there's something I, I kind of admire and like about writing down goals. I've just never pinpointed what I wanted to do. So I am going to read off my five year goal and then I'm going to play some applicable music. And I'm going to put reverb on it because uh, every good five-year goal deserves reverb. So this took me about this took me about a day. I sat down and I just I, I had like a little page on my uh, I have a notebook that uh, I carry around everywhere. It has a bunch of poems. Um, just um, I, I journal a lot because I want to see how I'm feeling like a year later. But every time I do, every time I look back, I'm like, oh my god, dude. But. Uh, I have that, and I draw on it as well, but um, I just sat down, and I just wrote down five-year goal, like, brainstorm, and I'm like, what do I really want to do? Like, what are the things that I want in five years, and we'll see if, let's see, let's see, I'm going to write it down, I'm going on my notes, yeah, so, I mean, there, it started off very different, but then I kind of, uh, as I kept brainstorming, I learned that I, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm kind of just like putting it all together. I'm kind of just putting everything where it should be. So I will go out. Let me start the music. And now, if you are wondering, and also, if you also want to get better with me, I mean, if this is the Terrence career process, you don't, I'm not, a, I'm no expert, but if you want to just do the way I'm doing it, um, I highly recommend you send me your five-year goal to my email and uh, I want to feel better podcast at gmail.com and I will go over it and I just I want to see what other people like what their goals are so I think that'd be pretty cool pretty interactive but let me go over mine so with that being said let's play the music my five-year goals for 2025 I will learn piano and guitar I will obtain a bachelor's degree and gain stable employment. I will have enough time and money to pursue arts. I will continue journaling and drawing as a creative outlet. And I will have financial discipline. Oh, and last but not least, I will continue my podcast. See, these are extremely fair goals, right? I mean, for the... like. The goal is by 2025. It doesn't have to be a specific date, but I want to look back five years from now and be like, holy shit, I did all those things. Now, I'll go over them. I, I mean, I will learn piano and guitar. I kind of know a semblance of it. I mean, I used to be in a band, but I never <laughs> I never gave the time to learn the actual theory. And I'm a piece of shit with a band that didn't know how to play an instrument. Yes, I know. Um, I will obtain a bachelor's degree and gain stable employment in an industry. Um, what I meant by that is like um, I'm continuing with fine arts. That's just what I'm doing for my degree. I'd really like an, like some type of employment in the arts industry. So that's what I'm going with, you know, or just make my own job, you know, something like that. That's that's just what I meant. And then I will have enough time and money to pursue arts. I mean, of course, I need that's all I like to do. That's all I like to spend my time doing. Of course, I'd like time and freedom to do that. So that makes sense. And then journaling and drawing. Yeah. Those are both good things. I, I just want to keep those going. Those are just stable markers that I'd like in five years. Could you imagine how cool? I'm just imagining how cool my sketchbooks will be at that point. At that point, I'm going to post my stuff on Reddit. And then, like, <laughs> you know, if you go on Reddit and people are like, oh, I just did this in 20 minutes. And it's like a picture of the galaxy. And you're like, okay. And then, let's see. Oh, I will have financial discipline. You know what? We are putting it down right now. Where's the law in order sound effect? In addition to your past crimes, Terran Screw, you are also a guilty of retail therapy. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I was just listening to All Falls Down the other day by Kanye West. You know, bless his heart. I hope he's doing okay. I hope he's not going crazy. And I don't want to say the word crazy. I just hope that um, whatever's going on is planned hopefully but it doesn't seem like it yeah, to, unrelated man but i i saw that whole south carolina jesus man i couldn't even watch that he's wearing like a security vest it was just a mess but unrelated i am guilty 
of uh and the reason i brought the song all falls down because he says you addicted to retail i mean there's just a lyric i'll throw it in there but uh i'm throwing in there but um yeah man every time i'm nervous or something i just or every time i want to fill a void i buy something and that ends now it's never uh i think that's um you know what i think that has to stem with i got my first job when i was like 15 i was the geico gecko and i learned very quickly that you can purchase your own shit and at 15, I bought the stupidest stuff. And I feel like that habit has never gone away. I mean, I bought, like, keyboards, I bought piano. And at this point, I feel like I've, I've owned everything I could possibly own. I don't think materials, it, <laughs> it's not the materials, it's, like, the journey, you know? So I'm trying to live like that. Uh, even though I have a really good mic right now, I do, there's no need to purchase all this shit. So that's number one five years from now i want to look back and be like jesus christ dude how did you spend your money like that you know that's the goal and then last but not least the podcast that is incredible i i really do want to continue this um last week was a bad note uh i really wanted to quit this and i think that's just a natural feeling that comes with creative uh output i feel like um there's going to be challenges down the road i know i'm going to have way more we'll see what they are but at the moment, I'm okay. I mean, it's it's really cool to think and look back. Like, I know this is only episode 12, but, uh, like, the first episodes, you don't even have, an, a, like, a clue how hard it was for me to talk on a uh, microphone. And although it still is challenging, I will say, I recorded a whole episode yesterday. It was supposed to be, like, the cryptids one. But I just got so angry. And I just, uh, I had to step away. And I was like, you know what? I'll just do this again tomorrow. But, uh. It's really cool to see just the progress of uh, just learning how to talk on a microphone. And I mean, this is just more of a, excuse me, a little burpee, but um, not a burpee. I didn't do a push up and get up. But uh, this is a really cool outlet to just talk. I mean, not a lot of people, you, you can always just check in on seeing how I'm doing. And I have a lot of coffee right now, so I like talking, so... It's really cool. I could just talk for like 45 freaking minutes, you know? I learned how to drink coffee really quietly, too. Um, the thing, perks of a microphone is it really tells you what you do very loud. And for me, it is chewing and moving and drinking and just basically doing everything. So, um, yeah, I mean, I really do want to continue this podcast. I'd love to do this for five years. It's not about the money. I mean, initially... At some point, you always think about that, but now I'm learning that it's just really cool to do. I mean, it's going to be awesome when I look back and be like, oh my God, I started that so long ago. Like, it's just, it's hard. It's, um, one of my things I need to work on is, uh, solo episodes. So I think that's kind of why I'm forcing myself. Um, and also my guests are very far out. So I kind of have to do solo episodes until like I have joe rogan level of guests where he doesn't even know them and he just lets them in his room <laughs> but uh it's a it's a good podcast and i really think everyone who's been on it who's tried to be on it i'm sorry uh i won't say their names i mean it's just i'm still kind of sad about that but uh not not as much as last week last week i mean i was gonna throw the fucking podcast away which i shouldn't have done i mean it was just a shitty week i mean just gotta move on you know and I did, kinda, <laughs> but uh, it's it's been good, and those are, these five-year goals are really good, I'm gonna start doing it like that, because I like, it. five years is a good distance, I mean, these last five years have gone by quick, but it, I've also, I've changed, but I haven't changed, I mean, my car has changed, I used to have a Chevy Avio, I look like a clown in it, and you know what? I will say I still look like a clown. I just bought a Vans. <laughs> I bought um okay, so I've been wanting these uh ultra range they're called ultra range shoes and they're like Vans' lightest version of their shoe. And I've always wanted them, but they're always so goddamn expensive. They're like ninety dollars. So I had an opportunity to purchase some on clearance. But there was a deal involved. And this deal was yeah, you can get the ultra ranges for thirty dollars. I'm like, oh, okay. And they're like, but they have flames on them. I'm like, shit. I'm going to look at Guy Fury at the gas station. 
But you know what? I bought them, and <laughs> they're pretty cool. I don't, I don't really care. They're really comfortable shoes, and I guess that's what I'm learning. It's more about functionality than looks. Well, it has to be now. I got flames on my feet. But um, five years is a, it's a really good goal. I really want to work in the arts industry, like fully, you know, fully committed. And then, um, yeah, I just want to save my money, do better. And then the bachelors, I've been uh, going to school for a while now, but that's more or less because um, I can't do a full course load. I, I work full time and then um, I'm just not going to go to school full time at, at the same time. I'll, I I compromise in the fact of I rather really learn everything than um, cram it. So especially with art, like I, I can take my time. I really don't mind. I do want a bachelor's degree, but um, I'm still working towards it. There's no it may not feel like it, and I'm going to get it 10 years later than everybody, but uh, <laughs> I'm still working on it, and it's really cool. I mean, I'll post a picture once I get it, you know? But, um, yeah, that's my five-year plan. And you know what? Next week, too, because um, I will say um, I did buy a big another purchase. This is, you know what I'm saying? You see you see the pattern here, but I did, this is a very useful um purchase i bought a so i converted to vegetarianism i don't i don't like that word and i really like it but my thing is i need quick recipes and i'm not a i'm not gonna call myself a cook but i can follow instructions you know i can cook but it's just by the book i mean my first job i was like a cook i worked at sea world too or not my first job i'm sorry it'd be the second job i worked at sea world and i was a cook and i remember just i vaguely remember that job i had to be like 18 years old and i was just like i remember just having a cleaver and cutting chicken it's like barely that's all i remember but um i wonder what those people are doing huh you know makes you you know what i used to cook pizza too and i used to be the messiest dude because i remember cheese used to be on my shoes and they used to smell dude Ugh. you know i didn't like that job it was cool because you you know you learned how a kitchen works and I kind of like working in a kitchen, just because, in the sense it's a very accepting environment because they just need anybody that cooks. It's such a high burnout rate that anybody can do it, and I'm not saying that anybody has the skills to do it, but just they're open to anybody. You know what I'm saying? And what I purchased, you know, getting back to the point because I always leave it is <laughs> I bought a, it's called the College Vegetarian Cookbook. So it's 150 budget, easy, friendly recipes for ve- uh, veg- just vegetarian specific recipes. So my issue with becoming a vegetarian is quick food. So like lately, it's it hasn't been hard not eating meat. Does that make sense? It hasn't been hard. It hasn't been hard avoiding meat. That's the way I wanted to say it. But the biggest issue for me is um, just quick stuff. Like, so, I mean, if I don't have something to make quickly, I go back to shit. So that's like, I mean, Lay's are technically vegetarian, you know, so I'm going to eat those, you know, ice cream. I'm still drinking. I'm still eating milk. Not really. I mean, I've never, I've always been, I'm lactose intolerant, so I've always avoided milk. So that's been a good thing. I have like oat milk and soy milk, but, uh. I finally, I just wanted like a nice little cookbook um, to just learn some basic recipes, you know, like just some shit I could put together. And I kind of want to get better at cooking. It's like one of those secret skills that are so cool to have. And (laughs) I'll work on it. I'm not going to tell anybody. Only everybody on my podcast. Yeah. But... What I was getting to with this is um, this book, I do want to just make the recipes and then put it on this podcast. So that's what I'm going to do. So next week, or my first recipe of this week, I'm going to film, I'm going to record myself um, purchasing the ingredients and then cooking it. And then I'll give you my final review. This is like a little, uh, this is a little project for me just to get me back into this podcast, which I'm excited about. So this week i was like and i've been um i'll give you the link to the book if you want it as well i'm going to be using this for the podcast mostly i'm just gonna i think once a week i am going to if i don't have a guest i'll put in a recipe 
So that'd be cool. So we'll learn cooking together. And if you're if you're shit at cooking, so am I. So like, this will be good, you know. And they got some cool stuff. Let me see. I'm like flipping through it right now, trying to find the fucking. Damn, they got desserts in here. Yeah, and then if you didn't know what I said, or if you forgot what the book is called, like I said, I'll put the link on the bottom. It is the College Vegetarian Cookbook, and it has 150 easy budget, easy budget friendly recipes. Fuck, dude. Well, regardless, I'm doing vegan Thai. So I'm the this week I'm gonna be making vegan pad Thai. There's the page, page 112. So it makes two servings. Part time's 10 minutes. That's not that bad. And then the cook time's 15. And it's Thailand's national dish. Dude, this sounds good. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to do vegan pad thai. So be ready for that. Um, I will post, I think next week when I make it, I will post the uh, recipe so you can also make it. I'll just take it from this book and cite it. Because that's what a good scholar does. And, you know, we'll cook together. I mean, it's it's only a quarantine, you know? And I just want to, like, I want to have a good time. I This whole podcast, this episode specifically is just me kind of just getting my shit in order and just kind of putting everything together. I mean, we have the five-year goal. We're back on a routine. You know, we're positive. I'm staying positive. And then... Um, you just oh I did want to talk I'll talk about sports too you know we'll just move into that as well but uh yeah I hope you know what I'll say it again please send me if you're listening to this podcast if you're this far in dude hell yeah let me tell you that hell yeah but uh, <laughs> if you're this far in please email iwtfb at um iwtfb podcast at gmail dot com and send me your five-year goal. I'm really curious what other people are doing, you know? Like, what's your goals? It doesn't have to be just like mine. But, I mean, maybe you want to get married. That's insane. <laughs> I mean, if you're with a partner, I understand that. But someone just saying, I want to be married in five years. That's insane. That's a lot of pressure on yourself. You don't have to do that to yourself. Um, Maybe I should put that in there. Maybe it'd make my grandma happy. My grandma asked me. She's like, when are you having kids? I'm like, do you see me with anybody? I think that's just a grandma thing to do. You know, they're like, why are you not procreating? I'm like, grandmother, not in this house. There are children here. Little 25-year-old children, okay? Little 25-year-old kids who don't want to grow up. (laughs) Oh, God. The family breakdown, you know. Actually, this is completely unrelated, but... (laughs) But uh, I watched uh, Expecting Amy, which is that uh, HBO Max show with um, Amy Schumer. And that shit made me so sad. Because, you know, when her show came out... Actually, I did love her show, Inside Amy Schumer. But, like, it is just known how much shit that lady gets living her life. And I, I know I shouldn't feel sorry for her. She's actually extremely successful and very resilient for the amount of shit she gets. But at the same time, like... There's a scene in the movie, or it's it's a documentary series. There's a scene where people confront her in real life, like, as a joke. Like, she calls them internet trolls, and they kind of do look like internet trolls. Like, literally, Jesus Christ. But, uh... uh, uh wow, wow. But, um... Yeah, and then, like, she has to... The fact that... Just imagine going home, and you have to confront someone about some bullshit that somebody said on Reddit. You know, like... I mean... Story of my life. That's how I started trying to feel better. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, man, it's just, I felt sorry. It was a good uh, documentary. I mean, it's just about pregnancy. Just seeing that whole, or at least her whole perspective of it. It was, um, it was something to watch. So if you want to watch that, I'd recommend it. I'm not going to advertise it. I don't have any pool. But uh, it was good. And then, um, damn, where, where did I come? What was this leading to? You know, this is my whole debacle with coffee. I'm already unhinged as it is. And <laughs> the moment you give me caffeine, I'm on it. I'm like a Wall Street businessman in the 80s. What's that Eric Andre sketch where he's just like walking around? He's like, buy it, sell it, buy it, sell it. That's what I feel like. 
But um, yeah, I mean, we'll just end this whole talk. I mean, I do want to talk about sports returning. If you don't think that's the craziest thing that's happened in this, I think, whole quarantine, it's hilarious, man. I cannot believe sports came back. Like nothing, you know? We should. I feel like we might as well should bring back the Olympics. I mean, <laughs> who are we kidding? Everybody's touching everybody. Do you, are, have you watched any scrimmage games for the MLB? <laughs> They're hilarious. I will say... I am happy because uh, the one sport I do watch is Formula One. I don't know if I've talked about it on this podcast, but um, I, I started playing the game a year ago. I, I purchased it for my Xbox, and I was like, dude, holy shit, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And then I looked into the sport. I'm like, holy shit, it got better. So they, they literally got me via video game. I mean, I feel like I'm they're trying to get an American base right now, and they got me, dude. So I'm in. I mean... And I'm super in. I love Formula One. Like, I love uh, McLaren is such a good team right now. And Carlos Sainz is going to Ferrari. But uh, it's kind of a shitty decision because Ferrari's kind of an ass right now. But um, it's such a good sport to watch. I feel like it's one of those sports, once you get into it, you're like, holy shit, this is so good. It's like a... I mean, and the personalities add to it. It's a movie. I feel like it's just you're watching a beautiful movie of a sport. And Louis Hamilton just wins all the goddamn time. I love how he forced everyone to kneel to take a knee. That was incredible because half of these guys are European and they really don't understand the Black Lives Matter movement. Not out of ignorance, but because they live on a whole different part of this (laughs) world. So it was just, uh, it was cool. I mean, he's just bringing... uh, acknowledgement to it and then um bernie ecclestone is the former f1 director who said some racist ass shit about it which is weird but um formula one's been good i just finished watching uh the hungarian grand prix uh louis won that shit as always you know i'm a, my team if i had to pick a team is williams i love george russell R- i said russell it's russell i love george russell i love nicholas latifi i mean i just want them to win once I love, you know, and I love that team for the history of the team because um, I read a book called The Mechanic's Tale and it was following uh, the Benetton team, but it also talked about the Williams team. It was from like 91 to 95 and um, just it's crazy, like the innovation Williams brought and the domination Williams brought and it's just, it's sad to see him in the back of the pack, but um that's my team, man. I have a little vest I bought. I do love George Russell. He's just a British man who looks like he drives a Formula One car. I mean, is there anything else that's perfect? And uh, it's just uh, it's interesting, man. I, I can't wait for I Actually, I don't even know what the new schedule is for Formula One. But I will say, I'm going to play a clip. So essentially, if you I'm going to post the link below. But oh my God, dude. They literally, so they're trying to keep social distancing with this whole sport, and it's virtually impossible because you have a pit team, you have a pit crew, and then you have fucking race cars that need attending to. So, I mean, any sport playing right now, there's just no way to social distance. Um, The NBA is kind of on top of it with the bubble, but I mean, I was watching a vlog the other day. It was JaVel McGee's blog vlog i should say and it got me thinking because you know like they're in this little bubble it's at like a walt disney world resort you know so that's the whole premise of it if you didn't know basically all the nba players that agreed to play during coronavirus's main pandemic agreed to live in a bubble so they're living in a resort but my thing is like do the staff live in this bubble as well i'll do some research I'll, i'll bring it back on next podcast but uh like, that was my thing, is because they went to, like, he, they ate at, JaVel McGee ate at a restaurant, but I'm like, there's this waiter wearing all kinds of PPE, he looked like he was in a biohazard suit, and I was like, dude, does this guy go home at night, or does he sleep in the same area? Meanwhile, LeBron's still playing, too, that's pretty cool. I think contractually, I think LeBron's contractually obligated to play, I mean, no one's gonna watch if he's not playing, I understand that, he brings such a draw, that's insane. Imagine bringing so much money to an industry that you probably can't stop playing, you know, until you break something. That's crazy. It's a whole different 
athletes, man, are insane. Just the whole, your body is your money. And that makes no sense to me. But it also does, you know. But, like I said, I really wish the Olympics came back. Because all I've been waiting for, all I've been waiting for, is skateboarding to be an Olympic sport. I feel like this was the year it was going to transition. It was no longer going to be a scummy sport that parents saw as this negative connotation of a neighborhood, you know? I really saw it as the... It was just really going to flip it around. I mean, now, because you, you... I feel like you have an end game with it. Before, I mean, you could have been a pro skateboarder, but that's such a... It's almost like being an actor. Like, I mean, it could work, it couldn't, you know? But, like... If you have an Olympic, I mean, if there's an Olympic event for it, there's there's a there's a concrete end game. You can literally become an Olympian. I mean, it's gonna change the whole prospect of why people skateboard. It's gonna change. I mean, I can only imagine, dude. Like, there's gonna be kids just wearing Under Armour, you know, skating. I don't know what that has to do with the Olympics, but I just imagine that just shows professionalism. <laughs> I mean, just like Under Armour and Vans, and that's just like a crazy thought. It's an insane thought that people are just not going to go out. In the, I mean, you could go out to streets, but now they're going to make what sanctioned um, street courses at like cities. I mean, you don't have to go street. Excuse me. Fuck another burp. There's two burps in this podcast. Drink if you hear me burp, but. <laughs> No, you're probably at work or something, whoever's listening to this. But um, it's insane, man. I just... And surfboarding. Wasn't surfing supposed to be in the Olympics? What the fuck is Kelly Slater supposed to do this year? I just watched his... You know, if I don't know if you've noticed, but I definitely have purchased HBO Max and have been watching it to its full capacity. They have a... What is it? A sports... It's one of those 2020 things, like where it's a, it's a, it was a Kelly Slater documentary, and that shit was insane. Kelly Slater just wakes up and surfs. I think that's all he has in his circuiting. That's all he has up in his brain is just to surf, and that's insane. I mean, I wish I could live my life so simplistic like that. I mean, what is it? I highly recommend watching it. It was really interesting. And then they have this weird part about him and his girlfriend. I mean. I want to say that they were just buying time. I feel like there's nothing else to put in the pot. It was just a weird part. I mean, I'm like, okay. It was like 10 minutes. I'm like, where are we going here? But, uh, that was a good documentary. But, um, all I wanted this year, man, I told myself, you know what's funny is I told myself four years ago, I was like, I'm going to go to the 2020 Olympics in Japan. And, you know, jokes on that little fucker because, um, he didn't go. He's in his house recording a podcast. Which I guess maybe 2016 Terrence would have been okay with it. Because that's when I also had my other failed failed podcast. A hush time of Terrence Greer. But, um, man, I just wanted to see Nija. You know, Nija Houston with a gold medal at his OC house. Have you... highly recommend following him on Instagram. Do you think... And follow him on Instagram and you tell me. Do you think that guy gives a fuck about coronavirus? <laughs> Uh, oh my god I feel like some people just live their life so boldly That it works out, you know You either have to live to an extreme or a complete closure of society It's either one or the other You can't fiddle-faddle, you can't be in the middle I guess that's a good quote for life, you know you can't be waiting in the middle of the ocean You either go for it or you don't go in at all Whoa Thanks, Coffee, for that great motivational speech. Take that home with you guys. But yeah, I mean, uh, the MLB, I, I still don't understand what the MLB is doing. You know, as I'm breathing, <laughs> you know, as a sports expert, I'm not. I just follow everything. I love watching. I love consuming, which is an issue that I will address later in life. Or not. I'll die with it. But, uh. The MLB, I guess they're playing scrimmages right now. I've just been wanting, I'm a Padres fan, so I've been wanting to watch Tatis. The guy's insane. Anyone that wears those colored Oakleys, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you watch baseball, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Anyone that wears those, I mean, they're soon to be MVPs, soon to be legends. Let's just hope the Padres don't trade them. Every year, the Padres just... We don't have any names. I'm like, please, for the love of God, can we just keep one person here? But I think, like, the Padres don't operate on the team winning. I think it's a booster team. 
if I remember correctly, my sports expert friends telling me, but uh, it, like I said, they have no expertise either. You know, we're just sitting, formally drinking beers, talking about sports. But uh, no, I mean, I just don't understand. They don't really have a game plan besides changing the balls out every, what, three plays. Besides that, I haven't seen any major changes to the MLB. And I think I think they're going to be hit the hard. I don't want to say that, but I think when winter comes and everyone starts getting sick, that's going to be the industry that... Uh, that uh gets hit the hardest. The NFL, rest in peace. It's been a great series. We're never gonna see it again. <laughs> I don't think I don't think the NFL is gonna come back. I, if they do, dude, I think they're gonna invent the the vaccine at this point. It's gonna be the NFL vaccine. I mean, if you want to go to a game, you gotta pay six thousand dollars for your ticket because you also get a vaccine. It's just part of the game. I mean, how much do you love football, guy? Huh? Super Bowl, baby. Ain't no way it's not happening. There's going to be people in those seats. It's like NASCAR. NASCAR started off with this coronavirus thing so well. They did eye racing everything, and now they're just like, everybody come back. I'm like, what, dude? What? Europe is over here. Everybody out in Europe right now is just smoking a cigarette by the pond. I don't know which pond, but I feel like everywhere in Europe there's a pond nearby. And I feel like everyone's smoking a cigarette with their beret. Just having a good time being European. And we're over here just fucking fighting each other. It's a mess. But um, <laughs> I have nothing else to say. This is a good episode. It was kind of ranty. But uh, we'll probably end it right there, man. I mean, you yeah, know, it's, uh, what, 47 minutes? It's a good time to end it. Um, yeah, we'll call this the spring cleaning episode. Spring summer cleaning. I mean, this is just I I posted my five year goal. I told you guys my routine. I mean, everything this week is great. And guess what? I'm gonna be back next week. I think next week is gonna be the last uh episode by myself, and then I'll get back to booking hardcore again. Just because I want guests again, you know. Um had one bad experience, but we will get back from it. And I mean I'm not going to call this a rough patch, but this is more of a learning experience. And I do kind of like doing these solo podcasts. I like throwing them in there. So that'll be good. So if you're listening at this point, thank you so much. I will play a little send off EDM song that I made in 20 seconds <laughs> to end this podcast. But uh, once again, if you want to send me a story, I swear to God, I will talk to anybody. I just want to, you know, communicate and want to make a community. Where people feel open. I make jokes. Mostly out of insecurity. Um, I don't really mean anything. <laughs> but uh, if you want to talk about anything. I mean if anything is going on in your life. I'm not an advice expert. But uh, I'll listen. You know. I'll give a perspective. That's all I can really do. Um, if you have the craziest party story. That you've been dying to tell everybody. You can email me. If you need a friend i mean i'm pretty flaky but uh i'm, I'm kind of reliable <laughs> but you can uh you can email me and if you just want to talk you can email me at iwtfb podcast at gmail.com i'll post it at the bottom of the link feel free to just email me if you, even if you want to just say what's up i will reply um, I've been looking at merch. I don't think it's going to happen yet, but, uh, I've started the foundation for merchandise. I'm very excited. I want something, uh, I was looking at shoes. I'll tell you because it's a failed plan. Um, and it looks to be very expensive to do that. I just wanted some iced out kicks. You know, imagine fans of the show wearing iced out kicks. Imagine knowing someone listens to a podcast by their shoes. I think that's the craziest thought. You know what? I'll keep that thought in my head. That's going to happen. <laughs> But uh, I've been looking at like hoodies, maybe a beanie. We'll see. It's just that's long down the line. But uh, I just like keeping an open conversation about it, just so you know, you know, if there's actual interest. But um, feel free to text. I was gonna say text me. I did say it. Feel free to email iwtfbpodcast at gmail dot com. I hope you feel better. I hope this uh, episode didn't sound ranty. Um, I'm gonna release it. I'm glad I did it. I mean, it was 
it was a feeling of uh, not wanting to do this. It wasn't as bad as last week. Last week, I was just going to throw this whole thing away. But uh, <laughs> but uh, it's still good. It's just getting back into the routine. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, next week, we're going to make vegan pad thai. So I'm excited about that. I'll do that whole little thing. And then, oh, I didn't even talk about that. I'll talk about it in the next episode. It's okay. We did good, you know? And thank you again for listening. Um, I hope you guys have a great week. I hope a girl kisses you. I hope a boy kisses you. I hope they kiss you. You know, anybody kisses you. You know, if you don't want that, that's okay. I understand. But uh, I hope somebody hugs you. I hope somebody cares. If not, listen to this podcast. You can hear me um, sound manic. <laughs> but uh, this is I Want to Feel Better, episode 12, Spring Summer Cleaning. Um, I don't know why I said it like that. I hope you guys have a great weekend and I'm going to end it now. Okay. Goodbye.